Hello, and welcome to today's episode of Courage Permission Slip. I am your host, Kia, and I am so glad to welcome my friend, my fellow entrepreneur, fellow collaborator, fellow marketing industry refugee, um, <laughs> my friend, Jess Joswick. And before I even get into our conversation, let me tell you a little bit about her. Jess is a no BS business coach, and that is the truth because I have worked with her a little bit, and she is the CEO of Backbone Business. Jess helps founders who are overwhelmed, overwork, and over their whole business get back their freedom, stability, and profitability so they can create happy, healthy lives for themselves and their teams and run the businesses they were born to lead. And she is committed to helping people build equitable businesses that shift our society's structures and change the conversation, which is super important. Jess, welcome. Thank you so much for being here today. Well, thank you, Kia. I'm really excited for this conversation. And anytime that I get a chance to talk with you, you know, it, it's, it's fun for me. I think, you know, we could just go on and on. Uh, I'm going to try to keep it brief, but you know, <laughs> we always have a good time. <laughs> we always have a good time and we always touch on so many important topics. Yes. Um, so I just, I'm so thrilled that we get to do this uh, in this, in this capacity. And, and so before we even get into like the real diggity, you know, you and I have had so many similar intersections, even before we met each other, we had so many similar intersections or, you know, similarities in our background through marketing and through our respective nonprofit work. And I'm interested to hear from you, what is it? Um, and, you know, if it was one thing or if it was a series of things, but what was it that ultimately pushed you into the entrepreneurial world? Yeah, um, it's it's so true. And I know that you can relate to this to some degree. Um, you know, the thing that pushed me was that I got bored super easily in every job I ever had, you know, all the way from um, stocking the shelves at a grocery store to, you know, being the marketing person at a $40 million company. Um, I was just in it, maybe, you know, the stocking shelves definitely got boring faster than the other job did, but it still happened. And so I was always, you know, teaching myself things and looking for new opportunities, but there, it was sort of like, like no job was ever good enough for me. <laughs> Not exactly quite like that. <laughs> But I got bored really easily and I just didn't have a lot of stomach for the office politics and for the toxic work environments. You know, mm. I just thought mm. this is really, it's really destructive. I mean, obviously looking back, that's what I think. Um, and so it was a combination of that and of, you know, never really knowing exactly what my place was and um, not having a clear career path. Uh, frankly, mm -hmm. you know, when I graduated, I graduated uh, college in the recession, the great recession, and I just kind of fell into what I was doing and I kind of made the best of it, but I wasn't, I didn't feel really passionate about anything. Um, what I did feel passionate about was, was learning. I really enjoyed mm -hmm. being self-directed. Um, and, uh, but I didn't, I didn't love the corporate structure. Uh, it's not a place that I thrived in. And so that kind of led me to look at, okay, well, well, what would it look like if I opted out or what, it, what mm. would it look like if I did something, you know, that, um, that no one ever told me was an option <laughs> and that I didn't. And I, I frankly didn't know a lot of people doing it, um, which was, was freelancing. Um, I didn't know a lot of people at the time <laughs> doing mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. um, and that's really how I got started in, in that the journey of being an entrepreneur, I started with, with being a, a gun for hire as a freelancer. Okay. So just, there were two things that you said there that, um, I know you and I have talked about quite a bit. It's something that I hear in my client conversations, but it's also something that I'm sure you hear in your con client conversations. And the first is the idea of opting out 
or having the courage to opt out, right? Like mm-hmm. deciding yeah. that you want to do something maybe a lot different or just a little different, but just that decision to let yourself opt out. And the other thing that you said that really resonates and certainly was something that first thrust me on my first entrepreneur path was learning that you have options. Mm -hmm. And I think that so often the thing that keeps people stuck is that they don't understand that there's another direction that you could go in, that you do have an option. Yes. Um, So I want to dig into that in a little bit, but first, you know, because this is about the courage permission slip, and I'm interested to hear from you when you hear the word courage, what does that mean to you? It means that you are listening to that little voice inside that maybe doesn't get a lot of airtime. The little voice that's telling you something that you really want that um, feels uncertain, unsure, that feels that, you know, success is definitely not guaranteed. And that can be anything like you said. I mean, that can be, you know, I want to move to Hawaii. Um, That can be, I want to (laughs) change careers. I want to leave a relationship. Um, You know, I want to actually study something different. Um, You know, it feels um, something that is risky and, or just speaking out, you know, for the first time about something. Uh, that's what courage is. It's really, for me, it's about honoring, um, honoring me, mm-hmm. honoring what I really want. Mm. I, and I love that you said it's that little voice that doesn't get a lot of airtime. Mm-hmm. And I think I, I can guarantee that you've heard this. I certainly have heard this too, is that there's this little thing, right. That keeps coming to people and they just keep pushing it down and pushing it back and ignoring it because, of all the stories, right? They feel like they're not ready. It's Mm -hmm. not the right time. I don't have enough money. I don't know enough. Um, And so that voice keeps getting pushed down and uh, and out Mm -hmm. until, you know, you're forced to make a change, whether it be a health challenge or you're getting laid off or something like that. So I love that you said that because I'm sure that someone watching or listening to this, can relate to that, to that little yeah. voice that like, is like, yeah, you know, totally. in the background, yeah. <laughs> like, a, like Beaker and the Muppets. It's oh my God. It sounds yes. like that. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it's, it's true. And, and just to, I want to add something to that, that courage isn't also, isn't always just about us. You know, it's mm-hmm. often about making, um, like saying something that needs to be said that other people, like no one else is saying this thing and I've got to say it, no one else is taking this stand you know, and so I've got to do it. And sometimes that's for your community or your neighbors or a friend or a loved one, or, you know, a whole, a lot of people or just one person, you know, sometimes it's not about you. Um, Mm -hmm. And I think like the, the, it, it can be like a lot of our courage, a lot of things that scare us, you know, are, yes, they're uncertain and yes, they're, they're unknown and all of that. But Um, it's often, it often has an impact outside of just us. You know, if you change jobs that impacts more people than just you, Mm -hmm. um, because you know, you impact other people, like you're part of, you're not an Island. So there's always that element for me. There's always that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that important, that point is really important just because I think, um, knowing that a decision that you make can impact other people in your circle, right? Whether it's people that you work with or people that are in your family or friends or what have you. Um, But would you agree that when you're making that decision that it's important to prioritize your voice, like, you know, the beaker voice, that it's important to prioritize your voice and what's giving you energy, what's giving you that agita over the voices of, um, of others. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, because usually that voice is, is not there, there's always some, you know, call it a universal truth or something like in, Mm -hmm. you can, I, you know, whether it's a, a spiritual 
there's a spiritual dimension for you or a religious dimension, mm -hmm. or, you know, it's just, I look at it as it's a, it's a law of nature that, you know, we all move forward you know, nature is always helping us move forward in some way. So it's whatever you want to call that, like that little voice is telling you to expand mm, <laughs> and mm -hmm. um, it's going to bring you out of a place that, you know, by, by, you know, the nature of, of what yeah. it's trying to do. So yes, um, you, you, it really is important to listen to, to it um, over what other people are saying, because other people, you know, we're just, we're just bags of, of, of blood and, and flesh, you know, <laughs> we're just, we're all, we're fallible and we bring our baggage along with us, you know? So other people, when you are listening to them, they're, even if it seems like what they're saying is an objective truth, you, they're bringing to the table, their own insecurities, you know, their own story, their own bullshit, so to speak, you know? And so, um, you, it's not actually an objective fact that changing careers is going to do X, Y, Z to you, or it's, or that it's dangerous at all, or that it's the wrong move. It's just that that person hasn't done it before. You know, that person doesn't understand. Uh, yes, that, and that's something that I, whenever the fear of judgment or the fear of what other people are going to say comes up in client conversations or anytime I'm running a training, um, that is that is what I usually respond with is that oftentimes, almost always, almost always, unless you said something really objectionable, um, almost always the way that people respond to something that you say or do is rooted in what's going on within inside them. As you yes. said, the baggage, the stories, their own beliefs, which a belief isn't necessarily true. It's just, as you said, it's just what you know, right? Yeah. It's something right. that you've grown to incorporate into your being. Um, and so almost always the way that people respond to you and anything that you're doing or thinking of doing is rooted in what's going on within inside them. And sometimes it's fear and resentment that they haven't taken the step that you're thinking of doing, Yeah, that they absolutely. haven't done the thing that you're thinking of doing. Yeah. Yeah. I see this all the time with, with newer entrepreneurs, you know, they, once they, they start to tell people, people bring their baggage to the conversation. Like, how can you, you really think you can make money from that? How are you going to find clients? How are you going to da, 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 because they don't know how to do it. And it's mm -hmm. not their fault that they don't know how to do it. You know, they may have the best intentions. They're, they're trying to protect my client from pain, from, you know, anxiety, from, from, you know, f perceived financial ruin, mm -hmm. <laughs> all of the above. <laughs> but um, just because somebody doesn't know how to do something doesn't mean it's, it's impossible. That's you right. know, far from, from that, actually. Mm. It's Ooh, just a, so something to learn. So good. So good. I remember when I was first thinking of becoming a coach and I was still working my full-time job, but I was just like, you know, preparing to, um, you know, get into my training. And I remember someone who I respected and looked up to who was a coach, by the way, who I respected and looked up to so much. And I told her that I was planning on becoming a coach. And she was like, you're never going to make money doing that. I mean, like immediately, yeah. immediately shot me down. And I was like, oh, and so, I mean, obviously I pursued what I was doing, but I never went back to her for anything. And so what's interesting is that I ran into her uh, several years later, pro later, probably like six years later, mm -hmm. she remembered saying that to me and she knew that I was still coaching. And she was like, you know, I said something to you when you first came to me saying that you were going to be a coach. And I remember saying something so discouraging to you. Mm. And I'm glad that you, um, that you continued moving forward. So wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Usually we don't get that kind of you know, yeah. 360 closure. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, so that, I mean, that was a really wonderful moment for me. Um, mm -hmm. but, but yes, I mean, that was, that was such a jarring experience. Yeah. 
to, yeah. to hear that from someone that you respect, right? Right. Um, yeah. You know, and, it, and it's really hard to um, just separate that, you know, because a lot of a lot of people get that from a partner, let's say, oh, you yeah. know, and um, it's really hard to um, like if somebody you really trust disagrees with the path, um, mm-hmm. I find it difficult to to keep believing in it, you know, like mm-hmm. I need you need your but we don't always get that luxury, you know, yeah. so you have to hold the vision of of that yes. voice, you know, the beaker. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Knowing yes. That, no, this is actually right. You know, why is this right for me? Yeah. Being, reminding yourself of that is really important. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so glad that you said that. Cause that is something that, um, you know, when I, especially when I'm first starting to work with a new client is reminding them, like, I'm one of the things that we're going to do together is really build your foundation so that when the haters come, because they will, it's not a, it's not a matter of if yeah. it's when yeah. that you are so grounded in your, why you are so grounded in your values and your purpose that no one can, you know, no one, you can be unmoved, right? Yes, right. That you're so rooted in your belief that what you're doing is right for you. It may not be right for them, but it's right for you mm-hmm. um, so that you can move forward. Yes. It's, that is, it's so important. And I, I think that that's the missing piece for a lot of people. Um, you know, uh, and I find it too, you know, when I'm on a sales call with someone and they say, well, th- I like this part of what you do, but not this part, you know, mm. uh, I don't think that works for me. Then mm. I'm, uh, if I'm not careful, I can be like, oh man, I need to change everything I'm doing. But, you know, mm. it's like this, it's one person. It didn't work for one right. person. Right. You know, it doesn't right. mean that we have to change everything just to suit what one person mm. says they think mm. they need. So right. yeah, it's right. really easy to do that. Yeah. Oh, so easy. And I think early in my coaching life, Um, I think I did do that where I was like, oh, well, maybe I should change for this. Right. And, and as you said, it was just one person, one person. So be rooted in your why people. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. (laughs) So, you know, just when you talked about being, you know, being really bored in the path that you were on. And then those two things that we talked about the, you know, giving yourself the option to opt out and then yes. learning that you had options. How did giving yourself permission to opt out, um, how did that lead you to what you are doing right now? Well, um, practically I started freelancing and, um, I was realizing that I was, you know, pretty okay at what I did. Um, but I thought that the key to success was just to get more skills, to build my mm. skill set as a graphic designer and a content strategist. And, you know, over time, I, I realized that, um, you know, just adding more skills wasn't actually helping me find clients. But mm. I, I did not know, like business was so, I was, I did not think that what I did was, was run a business. And I didn't really. Um, but I didn't see any possibility for me in that arena. You know, even after going to the best schools the money could buy, you know, supportive family, um, you know, great everything, like all of the, all of the, you know, traditional pieces were in place, you know, good grades, all of that. Like no one was ever like, Hey, you know what you could do? Like running a business is an option for you, or you don't have to have an MBA to run a business. Or here are some, you know, practical ways to apply business stuff to what you're trying to do here, which is make money on your own. Um, That just wasn't part of my journey at all. You know, no one in my family did that. Um, So I, uh, you know, really met a a business coach by chance at a networking event. That's the power of networking. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You never know who you're going to meet. Ever. Yeah, ever. She totally changed my life, um, transformed uh, what I did into a branding studio. And then eventually I was just sort of like, you know, I really want a bigger impact than a brand, you know, looking at somebody's brand can give me. And uh, uh, because a brand, like that's a pretty big part of a business. You know, you could, you potentially are looking at a lot of different areas, but I definitely didn't have this skill set or expertise to talk with him about that. Like we were really just talking about 
you know, what's your visual look like Mm -hmm. all of that, you know, what's, how are you going to sound your tone and all of that? And I was like, I just want to make a bigger impact for people. Mm -hmm. I want them to, to see the possibility and the, the results and potential and all of that, that I was seeing working with my coach. So that's when, you know, the second bolt of lightning hit, so to speak. And I was like, I'm just, I'm going to be a business coach. And I got certified, uh, went through that process Mm -hmm. and slowly phased, phased out the branding and phased in the coaching. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, and I'm guessing, but you tell me if I'm wrong, I'm guessing that maybe, or I'm wondering if there were any fears or stories that came up when you were thinking of shifting from the branding into the coaching. Cause I remember when you were doubling down on the branding, right? Like when we first met, that was, yes. that was your thing. Yes. And so I'm curious to hear like, what, you know, what was that kind of like secondary decision or permission that you had to give yourself to start making that, that shift? The first permission I had to give myself for sure was to dream Mm. because coming from nonprofit space, coming from, you know, uh, being in, uh, a a pretty, pretty much always underpaid by, you know, that that's what I see now anyway. Um, I, I did not set up my career to, for belief in me making a lot of money Mm -hmm. or, um, you know, that I could do, I could get to where I wanted to be as far as fulfillment and impact, um, faster than just, you know, following the rules, so to speak. And, Mm. you know, being, you know, following on someone else's leadership track. So, um, I had to, that was the first permission slip. Like it's okay to dream. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's okay Mm -hmm. to want more. Um, especially, you know, maybe you can relate coming out of nonprofits. It was like, you know, you're very much like your happiness and well being is very much secondary to the mission of the organization. Mm. And your ambition is, it's like, you know, be as ambitious as the job you have right now, because there's no career ladder, <laughs> like, here. like <laughs> you know, like this is the position. And there's nobody above you or there's, there is one person and, um, but they don't know about what you do. Like somehow, you know, (laughs) there was no like mentorship, um, at least to the places I worked at. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so that was the first thing. And then the second slip I had to give myself was that it was okay to be seen. Um, that was the biggest, honestly, the biggest roadblock, um, because I am introverted. Um, I never wanted to be front and center. Um, that was just my personality. You know, mm-hmm. it was, it was always a supportive role. It was always a, you know, deferment. And, um, I'm also, you can't tell cause I'm sitting down, but I'm also six feet tall. And so I just had a lot of like baggage about, you know, I was always really obvious and out of place, but I never wanted to be that way. And, mm-hmm. but, but being, you know, I building a personal brand really requires you <laughs> to show your face literally, and to be, you know, to, to be out there with a stand, with a, with a, with a, um, you know, a message. So, um, I had to really, really work on that, that it's, it's safe for me to do that. It's not dangerous. Um, and it's necessary to, to make the impact I want to make. Ooh, Jess, that, um, so yes, I can relate to those things. And I resonate with that so deeply, uh, in particular, uh, giving yourself permission to put yourself out there. Because I remember when I first started my business, I started it as the aha project because Mm -hmm. I thought I needed to be clever and no one's going to buy from me. Like, who am I? Right. Right? So I created this whole thing, which I love, right? Like I'm not knocking the aha project because that was so exciting. And I had so much fun, Mm -hmm. like, you know, all the things. It's a great name. Thank you. Um, And, but talking to a business coach, talking to other marketing people, who, who were 100% in my corner. But when I started shopping around the idea of letting my business be my name, right. Mm -hmm. And 
putting, you know, putting the stamp on Kia Myers Dugan and not the AHA project. I mean, the commentary was fabulous, Mm -hmm. but it was, yes, like we've been waiting for you to do that because Mm -hmm. I'm not buying the AHA project. I'm buying Kia, right? Like Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm co-signing on you because I know you're powerful and I know the impact that you create. They're like the aha project. Like it just, you know, like, what is that? I I'm, I'm hiring you. Mm -hmm. Um, and so giving my own self that permission to stand by my name, right? Like that was because I was doing speaking. I mean, even early on, I was already doing speaking. And even when I was like, writing my bio for things it was like the aha project by kia myers and it just like it was clunky (laughs) and it was weird but i felt like i felt like even though i had 20 more than 20 years of experience of doing my thing i still didn't feel like my name was enough I felt like I had to hide behind something else. So I so resonate with that, Jess, of, you know, giving yourself permission to put yourself um, out there. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, no, thank you for sharing that, that, that part of it. I think it's like one of those things that it's sort of like, well, I'm not going to talk about, you know, how bad it was for me or Mm. that it was hard for me to do that, but you know, or, or whatever, like it feels so personal still a little Mm -hmm. bit for me, like, oh my God, you know, it's, it's revealing. But, um, I mean, the truth is that like businesses can be a great way to hide, um, you know, and that's the same for, you know, your dream job that can be a really good way to hide. And it Mm -hmm. feels like you're being productive and great and special and all these Mm -hmm. things, like you're doing the right thing and you're, you're going for it. Um, but it can, it can, it's just another hiding place. (laughs) Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Um, and so I'm curious, I'm going to, I'm going to go off the, the trail a little bit here. So this concept of hiding, because I do believe that, right. I believe that people are hiding from, you know, how it's going to feel if someone says something that is, you know, a little left of good. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm really interested in your perspective on um, what maybe you were hiding from in this, you know, in that shift that you had to make? Yeah. Which shift? The one of the shift of going from the branding to going into being a business coach? Well, I was definitely um, just, you know, it's the old, like, what will people think? You know, Mm -hmm. when people asked how long I've been a coach, I was like, uh, you know, don't tell them the truth that it hasn't really been that long. Um, uh, I, I think I was, I was definitely nervous about feeling illegitimate or feeling like, um, I had to have built this multimillion dollar, you know, company and sold it to be a business coach. Um, I had to have done all of these things that I had seen other people do, or, you know, that was just true about other people, you know, that was their path. Like they, they started a company. They didn't want to do that anymore. They sold the company. Now they're a coach. Um, you know, the reality is that that's just how life happened for them, you know, and it didn't happen that way for me. Um, that doesn't make it more legitimate than what I know I bring to the table. Yeah. Um, Mm. so I, I think that that's, you know, I really, I think it was easy for me to hide as a branding studio for sure. And I definitely did. Um, I definitely hid behind my client work and my client results and, you know, pretty pictures and whatever. It was much harder once I became a coach. I mean, it was Mm. pretty much Mm. impossible. So I sort of like that really necessitated me. (laughs) Mm. I, I had to figure out how to, how to, not do that anymore. Like I had to figure out how to talk about the, this, the hard stuff. And, um, yeah. And, and I I think that the other thing, um, and I don't know if this relates to every type of business, but definitely, you know, when you're a a coach or a consultant or something, um, that, you know, it really, uh, one way to take the pressure off of yourself is to focus on, on your clients, you know, what do they need? Um, 
I just find that when I, you know, if I get bent out of shape about something like that, um, about, you know, what are people going to think like, well, that's not a good question. Like, what do they need to hear? Mm. You know, and how can I say that rather than what are people going to think of me? You know, I have, uh, cause I, my ego's thrown out the window. Like I do stupid stuff on Instagram all the time, you know, stupid, like embarrassing stuff. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah. So, you know, and that ship has sailed of me trying to look cool, but, um, what do my people need to hear? What does Jess from two, three, five years ago need to hear? Mm-hmm. And, and that's mm. what I talk about. Yeah. Um, oh, that is so good. I love that of making it not about you, but making it about the people that you are serving Yes, and what they need to hear, right? Like what do they need to hear to make the shift that they've been wanting to make, but they haven't yet for any and all the reasons. Yes. Um, yeah, that, so that service component is so important because, you know, our stuff is not other people's stuff. Right. And, and vice right. versa. Yeah. Um, so what, um, and I'm, and curious how much of those fears of like, you know, what, what are people going to say about me and you having to shift it to what, you know, what your audience wants to hear, how often is that fear coming up for you now? Or are there new and different fears that you're noticing are coming up? There's definitely different fears. I think, I don't want to say that I, you know, I'm fully over Mm. feeling scared about being visible or anything like that, but it's definitely, um, you know, I really just don't, don't feel the same way anymore. I, and I think it was just exposure therapy, like Mm. just being like, okay, I'm going to do a story. Well, that was silly, but you know, I really don't have time to redo it. So I'm just going to post it. You know, I think it's, it's just doing it over and over again, but it's definitely new fears. I mean, it's definitely now, um, you know, am I a good leader? Am I a good boss? Am I, um, telling my clients, am I, um, up-leveling my coaching skills? You know, I think that that's really important. Um, you know, I, it's been a while since I've been certified. So it's just like, am I continuing to get better? Um, you know, am I, um, staying ahead of, of the eight ball, so to speak on, on what's happening in, in business and what, what's happening in coaching? Um, am I moving the conversation forward? Um, Mm. and that doesn't mean that I never rest or anything like far be far from it actually. Um, but I, that's more of my concern now. And, you know, how do I, um, how do I find more people who are, on the same wavelength as I am and how can I, how can I show up for other people in a way that that helps them and that, that helps my business. So I guess that's, you know, thought leadership in some, Mm -hmm. in some way, but yeah, there's definitely, there's definitely still, there's definitely still fear. You know, there's definitely still, I I don't think that ever goes away. I think it's just new level. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's, there's just, there's just fear of like a bigger audience, Mm. you know, um, mm-hmm. what will more people think? <laughs> is another way to say it. <laughs> right. So as, and as you, and you said it 100% right, new levels, new devils. So mm-hmm. as you're, you know, as you keep shifting into these new levels, um, and these new and different fears are popping up, how do you, how do you navigate that? How do you navigate continuing to skill build and expand mm-hmm. your audience, um, and while still navigating the fears that are coming up. Yeah. So I really listen to my clients and what they need. I have been working with a lot of people who, um, you know, have found out recently that they, um, have ADHD, adult ADHD. Mm. Um, and so that's opened up a whole new area of investigation for me. You know, how can I best support them? Like, what are some, and, and I already talk about healthy habits a lot. That's like one of the core things, you know, core messages I have. So, um, but it's just going deeper into, into what they need and exploring that. Oh man. I mean, otherwise it's, it's just making sure that I know, um, the new, the new hotness <laughs> and like what's, what's working in marketing. Um, everything is always changing in online business. 
And always. so, yeah, so I'm, I'm always just trying to, I, I just look at like, what are people with bigger businesses and bigger audiences doing, you know? So I, I'm on their sales pages. Like I'm on, I'm in their, you know, what are they offering? Like, how are they doing what they're doing? Um, I'm always just looking at that um, because they have, you know, maybe more resources than I do or a bigger team. And so I'm just seeing like what's happening. Um, and then my own personal skill set, I'm definitely, I mean, it's interesting you say that, like, I'm, I'm definitely looking for, um, like, how can I learn more about some of the psychological underpinnings of um, creating habits for ourselves and just how we think and how we do what we do. So that's, I think that's my next area of investigation. Um, it's interesting to me. Um, and I also, I know it helps, it helps my clients and my audience. Right. So, because yeah. so often those underpinnings, right. I mean, rarely, rarely is the, or are the things that people not moving forward on solely rooted in the, well, how do I do this? Right. Like what are the mechanics? Because that's so easy to learn and get down and just, you know, you yeah. practice that over and over again. It is almost always these, you know, the narratives that we tell ourselves, the habits that we have, you know, that we have developed over a period of time that if we shift from them, like the sheer terror that comes up when you think about having to learn a new way or figure mm -hmm. out a new way to do things and, you know, all the fallout or perceived fallout from those things. That is almost always, always the thing that is in the way. Right? Yeah. It's like, that's the thing <laughs> that keeps yeah. people from spending a little more money than they planned on the coaching or yes. from doing the homework in between coaching sessions. Because when you start getting into it and you start seeing, oh shit, like I'm going to have to, I'm like, things are going to have to change. And I don't, I don't quite know how they're going to change, but I know this thing over here. So maybe, yeah. maybe I'll just keep doing that. Right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, I know. I mean, <laughs> we've talked about this before. It's, it's, it's so true. It's another way to hide. Like it's, it's not, if you, all you want to do really is learn how to use an app or which, you know, which tech thing should I buy or, you know, what's the best thing to do on Instagram or whatever, like, like go to YouTube university, like, but if you really want to solve, if you really want to learn how to fish and solve the problem long-term, mm -hmm. um, then hire a coach yeah. because you're exactly right. It's the way that you handle, um, the fact that you're going to always need new tech or yeah. you're like the way that you market is going to change. You don't mm -hmm. just figure it out once. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, to be a leader, to be in business for the long haul, or to be doing, to be fulfilling a mission, whether you're in, you know, have a business or you're in a job or you're starting a nonprofit or you have a side hustle, like whatever it is, you're just trying to be a good person. Like <laughs> it's a long game. <laughs> and yes. if you are going to be in it for the long haul, you have to skill build, you know, you have to work on your mindset around it. Yes. 100%. So, um, mindset, <laughs> skill building. <laughs> yep. Uh, I mean, the gems here are so, so fire. <laughs> um, and before we throw anything else in, yes. I would love for you just to bottom line, because you have shared so many gems and we've just uncovered as we always do. And I knew we would here, we have just uncovered all the things that could be in the way and little ways that, um, you know, that people can move forward just a little bit, right? Like we're not right. talking about like flipping tables, right? We're right. talking about just the little things that mm -hmm. you can do. Yes. So for that person or those people that are listening to our conversation and they do have that goal or that vision, or maybe just like an idea, right? Like it's not fully baked, but they have this idea that keeps coming to them, but they're not taking action because the fear and the doubt are too important, or they're making it more important than the 
dream, goal, vision. What is the one piece of advice that you want to give to that person? That the idea, the thing, the scary thing doesn't, your solution to it, your vision doesn't have to be perfect. It does not have to be fully realized. (laughs) You do not need to have a five or 10 year plan for it. Um, you, there are so many details of if, if you've really got a big idea and a world shaking thing that you're trying to do, there's so many little details. There are so many things that, you know, you, we could spend all day trying to figure out, and then we'd have to throw it away because once you get going, you'll realize what's really important and you'll realize the steps that you're going to have to take. And so anytime that we feel fear and doubt about it, um, I often, I often find that it's, it's because we're, we're waiting until it's perfect. We're waiting until it's a fully baked, you know, loaf of bread. Mm -hmm. And it's, we just can't, you cannot do that. You know, we, we, if you're going to make the impact you want to make, um, you cannot wait until it's fully baked. You know, you have to, you have to pull out that loaf of bread and you got to start kneading it and you got to shape it again and shape it again. And, you know, we, we've got to start the process now. Yes. Yes. Um, I, I love that so much because I do hear that a lot of people and as a, uh, as a type a or recovering type a recovering perfectionist, there is a point where you have to decide. And I learned this, um, in, in my marketing career from, uh, from a good friend at some point you have to decide, is it good enough? Can I just, can I move and make adjustments along the way? Because you're never going to know all the things you're never going to be fully ready. It's never going to be fully baked, fully, fully understood. And if you are waiting for that, you will be waiting forever. And yes. in the meantime, a million other people who have a similar idea are going to move in and then, you know, then it. your yeah. idea, you know, won't be as impactful. So um, it's never going to be good or it's never going to be perfect. Right. Ever. You just <laughs> you have to get it out there and, you know, there is this element of building the plane while you're flying it so that yes. you can. Um, you feel that you are, um, you know, that you are competent and that you are enough. Yes. Yes. You're yeah. I, I have nothing else to add. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, well, Jess, as I suspected, this was all that I hoped it would be in more I yes. so enjoyed our conversation. We, we just, we went all the, all the depths. We did. We did. Yes. Thank yes. you so much for this. Yes, it absolutely. It was Highlight my, my pleasure. <laughs> awesome. I love hearing that. Um, but before we go, where can people learn about and connect with you? So I show up frequently, as I mentioned on uh, Instagram, my handle is at backbone business like a spine. And you can see me, uh, talking, dancing, uh, you probably see a cat or two as well. Uh, <laughs> definitely <laughs> on there. And, um, you can find out more about how I work up w- work with my clients, um, at backbone business.com. That's where all of my, my programs are and more, more about me. Awesome. And I will include all of this in the show notes so that you will not miss a beat on what Jess has to offer and what she is talking about on her socials, because it's, they're always great resources and gems and guidance. And I still, um, you know, even though my path is shifting a little bit, I still look to you and glean guidance from you. So I oh, thank you. <laughs> strongly recommend that you, uh, that you follow along and get connected with her. Um, well, Jess, again, thank you so much for joining, uh, this conversation and for sharing your, your personal story and your wisdom and your guidance. I so appreciate it. And I know that people listening, uh, appreciate it as well. Thanks, Kia. Thanks so much. It's been fun. Awesome. Well, thank you everyone for listening into this episode of Courage Permission Slip. Until the next time.